all right, just going to do a video refuting the Calvinistic twisting of predestination in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to 11. I'm going to show how they twist that passage and fail to compare scripture with scripture to teach their Calvinistic twisting of what the word predestination means. So first of all, Calvinists, like I've said, like to use Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to 11 to teach the Reformed, and, Refor reformed rendition, a bit of a tongue twister there, of uh, predestination. This is also used to deny free will in the context of salvation. Hyper-Calvinists believe that God chooses who gets saved, and the believer basically has no free will in the matter. That God has, has predestined you. Like, here's how they say it. Sorry, there's a dog barking. Here's how they say it. Basically, God predestines you to be saved, and you, be, you basically have no free will in the matter. That's how they twist it. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 4 to 11. According as he hath chosen us in him before the foundation of the world, that, he sh that we should be holy and without blame before him in love, having predestinated us unto the adoption of children by Jesus Christ to himself, according to the good pleasure of his will, to the praise of the glory of his grace, wherein he hath made us accepted and in accepted in the beloved. Not good at reading on a computer. In whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace, wherein he hath abounded, toward, abounded towards us in all wisdom and prudence, having made note unto us the mystery of his will, according to his good, according to his good pleasure, which he, himself, which he hath proposed in himself. Again, just not good at reading on a computer, bear with me. That in the dispensation of the fullness of times he might gather together in one all things in Christ, both both which are in heaven and which are on earth, even in him, in whom also we have obtained inheritance, being predestinated according to the purpose of him who worketh all things after the counsel of his own will. Now they home in on the wording of predestination and try to make it seem like, oh, God predestines you to be saved. Uh, is that what it's talking about there? So they, they home in on verses 4 and 5 and verse 11 in particular. But further details are given in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 12 to 14, about what this predestination is. Uh, continuing on to verse 12 down to verse 14, that we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, in whom he also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that you believed you were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. I want to notice that word redemption. You'll find that word a lot in these passages they like to twist. Notice how Paul talks about who first trusted in Christ. He says that who first trusted in Christ. He's addressing people who are already saved by trusting in Christ. In verse 12, Paul talks about the, quote, the redemption of the purchased possession. This is referring to the rapture of saved born-again believers. In other, words, in other words, predestination in this passage is not God choosing these people to get saved before the foundation of the world. The predestination is referring to the fact that already saved believers are predestined for blessings, including being called up at the rapture. This passage is talking about God predestinating in the form of being sealed in the Holy Spirit. You know, you're predestined to be called up, and that happens in the form of being sealed with God's Holy Spirit. Already saved believers to be called up at the rapture. Compare verse 14 with Ephesians 4.30. Okay, Ephesians 4.30 says, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you are sealed until the day of redemption. What's the day of redemption? Okay, being sealed with the Holy Ghost is tied in with being called up at the rapture. Once you get saved, God seals you with his Holy Spirit, which means you're predestined to go up at the rapture. You're sealed until the day of redemption, the redemption of your bodies. Okay, also compare this with Romans chapter 8, verse 11, and Romans chapter 8, verse 23 to 25. Okay. Romans chapter 8, verse 11. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead, Jesus from the dead, sorry, dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Quicken your mortal bodies, the redemption of your bodies. Uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 23 to 25. And not only they, but ourselves also, which have the first fruits of the spirit, even we ourselves grown within ourselves, waiting for the adoption to wit the redemption of our body, for we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he yet hope for? But if we hope for that we see not, we do. Then we do. Th sorry, then do we with patience wait for it? Okay. So we have what's going on there is that it's talking about the predestination. The predestination is talking about the rapture, the redemption of your body. It's, you know, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. Okay, that's what happens. You're sealed with the Holy Spirit. And then you have the redemption of the purchased possession. God purchased you with his own blood. Acts chapter 20, verse 28. But then your bodies are redeemed at the rapture. Like I talked about in Romans chapter 8, verse 23, the redemption of your bodies. So that's the predestination it's talking about. But you see, Calvinists, they don't compare scripture with scripture. They'll take a verse here and there out of context, but they won't actually have deep 
uh, scriptural analysis and comparing scripture and looking at scripture in context. Because why? Calvinism is a cult when you really get down to it. And all, th all cults have one thing in common. They will just look for verses and, and isolate verses here and there out of context to prove their doctrine. So, yeah, don't be deceived by Calvinism. They uh, isolate scripture to, to basically deny man's free will in the context of salvation. So don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.